Hi there, I'm Steve Best, Howe Sound Marine Trail Steward for the Sea Kayak Association of BC, and I'm here to give an update on what's been going on with the Sea to Sky Marine Trail this year. For anyone who might not be familiar with the trail, I gave a pretty detailed history at last year's BC Marine Trails annual general meeting. You can find a link to a video of that presentation on the How Sound page of our club website. So I won't be going over old news here, but instead I'll focus on what's been happening this year. The year started with BC Parks planning to build a signed kiosk at the new campground at Apodaca Park on Bowen Island with a smaller Sea to Sky Marine Trail map in the kiosk. This sparked an updated Sea to Sky Marine Trail map, replacing the really big 3 foot by 4 foot map from 2015. It proved to be a much bigger task than we anticipated, but the new map is done and it will be put up at the four provincial park sites as well as the new Oceanfront Park in Squamish. Back in early 2023, Sea purchased enough yellow cedar for five tent platforms and stored it at the Recreation Sites and Trails Yard in Squamish. The rest of 2023 was spent getting two grants so we could hire a backcountry contractor to build the platforms. Last November, the second grant came through. So this spring, we went ahead and hired the contractor. In March, he towed a raft of lumber for two platforms from Britannia Beach to Zorro Bay, where he and his crew built the platforms on a new area we've opened up on a bench on the point at the north side of Zorro Bay. At the same time, he added a guardrail to the stair on the access trail that an RSTBC trail crew had built the previous summer. He then moved on to Thornborough Channel. So let's take a paddle to Thornborough and see what he did there. We've launched from Porto Cove on a rare windless house sound day and we're heading past the north end of Anvil Island. Here's the backside of Anvil Island. And the Thornborough Channel Recreation Site is just around the point ahead. Rounding the point with the Recreation Site ahead. Arriving at the site, there's the landing. To the left of that, the creek. There's the first tent platform we built here in 2020 on the high rock bluff. And here's the new area we've opened up on the rocks just above the water below the high rock bluff. With one, two, three new tent platforms, plus a second picnic table. Just past the creek, a new trail leads off to the left. There's the first platform.
A short scramble up the rocks leads to the second platform. The new second table sits in a little hollow beyond that. And last of all, platform three. Nestled between the trees. The view from the new table. When we brought a new staff member from RSTBC here, his reaction was, you should keep this secret. In May, Philip Kubik, site steward for the Bain Creek Recre Recreation Site, led a work party to the site by kayak. Together with volunteers Nick Heath, Ken Bigelow, and Jordan Rosenfeld, they cleared rocks from a beach to create a new boat run at the east end of the site. Cleared and leveled a new tent site. Enlarged an existing tent site. Improved the stairs up the hill, performed site maintenance, and planned further improvements. In 2017, Scobby C installed a steel food cache at each of our six sites. Now, six years later, they were badly rusting out. In the summer of 2024, we went ahead with the second part of our grant project, replacing the rusting steel caches with new aluminum ones. Our grant application was based on seven new caches, two at Thornborough and one at each of our other sites. It was subsequently decided to go ahead with two caches at each site, and RSTBC agreed to kick in for five more. Over the course of the summer, 12 aluminum food caches were purchased from a fabricator in Powell River, shipped to Gibson's, delivered to the sites by landing craft, and installed by the RSTBC trail crew. Here are the two new food caches at Ramilly's Channel. Here's the first one at Thornborough Channel. And the second one beside the creek. Here are two at Islet View. and two at Zorro Bay. One of the signposts at Rumilly's Channel had rotted through below ground and fallen over. In August, Nick and I went over in his powerboat and installed a new yellow cedar post. All the signposts were installed in 2015. This is the first post to rot through, so we may be looking at replacing all of them in the near future. Nick and I had time left over, so we scrounged a cedar retaining log off the beach and leveled a good-sized tent pad on the terrace. When the RSTBC trail crew built the 2023 access trail to the new tent platform locations on the point at Zorro Bay, they started the trail from the mid-tide level on the beach. This meant that the new platforms were cut off from mid-tide to high-tide and back to mid-tide. In October, I paddled over to Zorro 
with my trusty reciprocating saw and extended the trail to the beach past high tide. The trail leads from the end of the beach past our very first tent platform along the base of the cliff down a bit of a slope and up some rocks to where it joins with the existing trail. That brings us up to date in how sound for this year. Thank you to Site Stewards Cynthia Kennedy for Vermilly's channel, Philip Kubik for Bain Creek, Ken Bigelow for Thornborough Channel, Mike McComb for Zorro Bay, and Squamish paddler Dave Beresford for Tantalus Landing. Thank you to departing Islet View site steward Brian Pegg, who has moved to Maine Island and has had to retire as site steward. And welcome aboard to new Islet View site steward Katie Meredith Kovacic. Welcome aboard, Katie. Thank you to volunteers Nick Heath, Jordan Rosenfeld, Katie Meredith Kovacic, Kirsten Hathaway, and Nico Van Brandt. And my apologies to anyone I may have missed. <laughs>